Today's video is going to be about alcohol stoves. Hey folks, my name is Brian. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. Uh, today's video, like I said, is going to be about alcohol stoves. The reason this came about is I did a video not too long ago, a while back, about just different kinds of camp stoves. I was at a Boy Scout camp out and I mentioned that I had zero, zero experience with alcohol stoves. I decided I wanted to learn more about them, so I started researching and looking at videos on YouTube. And there's lots and lots of videos about how to make alcohol stoves, and there are lots and lots of designs of alcohol stoves. But they don't really go into the details. I didn't find any, at least explaining too much about how they work and all that. So I thought I would go ahead and do my own take on it and show you, you know. I actually made this one in about 15 minutes, so it's not very hard to do. And it works okay. You're not going to cook a four-course meal over this thing. It's primarily it's used by lightweight backpackers and, and people that are just looking for an emergency stove. You can cook freeze-dried food or boil water or make you know rice or pastas and stuff like that. So basically, it's made out of two cans, two coat. This case, soft drink cans. You can make them out of smaller or larger cans or whatever. And then there's an, an inner wall inside that you make, so it creates a pressurized chamber on the outside here. And you pour your alcohol in the middle. You got a couple of little notches down here in the bottom. That allow the alcohol to get into the outside chamber. What happens is, as the, as you light it, first the flame will come out the middle, and as the alcohol heats up, this chamber becomes kind of pressurized, and then these little jets that you make around the outside will actually, for the alcohol fumes will, will start coming out those jets and burning. It kind of looks almost like a burner on a stove. One of the things about alcohol stoves that I learned from Mato Nupai is that. You want the uh, smaller stoves work better on the smaller backpacking type cups because what happens is you've got too big a stove, the flames will run up around the outside of it and that's not a very efficient way to heat. So you want the flames to be concentrated on bottom. Okay, so this is kind of the tools and equipment that I'm going to recommend. At least you're going to need to make the stove we're going to make today. First of all, you're going to need a couple of aluminum cans. Obviously, that's going to be, the, the, that's going to be your stove. A razor of some kind. I use this right here. And... You can, there's a couple of different different ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the way I think is the simplest. But so for that, you just need a razor knife. You need a pair of scissors, just a cheap pair of scissors. Doesn't matter, nothing fancy. Good old fashioned Sharpie. A pair of ne needle nose pliers. A nail of some kind. Measuring tape. A drill. With a, I've got a 16th inch bit in this case, and you can see that is a very small bit. You don't have to, let me say, you do not have to use a drill. That's in order to make these holes around here. And this first one I made, I actually used a push pin, just like you stick on a bulletin board. And it works fine. Just a push pin, thumbtack, sharp nail, anything that you can poke holes in, really. Um, that works fine. And you need some kind of spacer. You can use a book, whatever. You know, basically, in this case, I've just got a box that a knife came in. Depending on the thickness of this, whatever you use for a spacer is going to determine the height of your stove. And then last case, this is a little something I just learned uh, through experimentation. Just a, uh, a little pad like this with a cardboard back, something that's a little bit soft so it's not totally hard. Nothing per and we'll, we'll go over that, you'll understand why in a minute. Okay, probably the first thing you want to do is go ahead and break these little pop tops off if you have them. Now some videos I've seen show just taking a regular blade like this, taking it out, laying it on a book or inside it, actually closing a book on it, and just using it to score the can, and then you can break the can out. This way it seems to work just as good to me, and it's a little simpler. Just go ahead and put your can against whatever you're, you're, you're using for a spacer, and just turn it around. And there you go. So you got a straight line around this can, if you can see that. Do the same thing on the other can, because you want these to be pretty much the same. Next step is just to go ahead and take your utility knife and start a little bit above the line, because you don't want to just give it a quarter inch above it or whatever. And it helps if you kind of squeeze it a little bit on either side, but not, not too much, just enough to keep pressure on it. And just slowly poke a hole in. You don't want to dent the can at this point. So just work your way in. And once you get a little slice in and get started, then you'll be able to cut a little bit. Being very careful not to crimp, not to dent up the can. If you get enough like that, you go ahead and take your scissors. And just go ahead and cut down to the line where you're on the line now and just cut around the line. This doesn't have to be perfect, but straight as, you know, as close to straight as you can get it. Okay, so there's um, one side. Okay, you're going to want to do 
the same thing with the other can but before you do that the second can as you can see is going to be the top and it's going to be open so you're going to need to cut out the bottom you want to cut cut right along this groove here so this this raised area right here that's going to be the the top and bottom of your inner wall so it's going to fit in this groove that's going to really create a good seal so what i would suggest doing is just scoring around the inside carefully and slowly take your time so you get this where you can see it and just score inside here the closer you can keep these things to being in the same in the same groove as the knife goes around the better it's going to break out and don't put too much pressure you don't want to you don't want to slip and cut yourself but so you can if you can see the the score line right here that's what you're trying to do so this is probably the most tedious part of the entire operation okay so i've got it scored you probably can't see that on camera i don't know if you can or not all around this inside edge the next step as far as i can find figure out and i've made a few of these i wish i could tell you that and i've got the all the answers but i don't so i'm just going to just take this thing and basically you're going to cut an x in it and kind of break out the score line so make sure you don't have your hand where it's going to get cut so i've got my hand back here on the back and just kind of work it in what i found works best is, is to work it from the middle and just kind of with a little back and forth sawing motion cut it to the edge you want to be very careful that when you get close to the edge you don't put too much pressure on it because you don't want to cut into this lip that's this lip here that's going to be your your top and bottom of your wall this in this case the top of your wall so just take your time again we're not building a piano here so you know precision is not super important this is probably one of the most critical parts of it as far as as far as just taking your time and not and not screwing up because a you don't want to cut yourself b you don't want, you don't want to mess up all this work you've just done so when you get right to the edge, that's when you got to really, really, really kind of be, be careful. And the goal is going to be to break these out from the score line. So just take your time. And you don't want to tear up into here again. If, you, if you're not very careful, you could tear up into there. You use the uh, handle to break down. And see how they're kind of broken off inside there? So that's what you want to do. That one's about gone. So just kind of work with them. Now, back and forth, gently, gently, and they'll break off. Okay, and what you're left with now is this. That's kind of rough. If you really want to, if you're really concerned about that, you can just take a piece of sandpaper and go around inside there. Honestly, you're never going to be handling that, so it's not a big deal. I've not cut myself on any yet. Um, next step is going to be now we can cut this line like we did before. It's just a lot easier to go ahead and take that out while you're dealing with a whole can instead of a little piece of can. Okay, so we've got this cut out now. We've got the top, and that's going to be the bottom. They're going to obviously they're going to fit together like that. And we're also going to now the next step we've got to have we've got to make a wall that's going to fit inside this groove here, and in this groove in the bottom, and that's going to be your inner wall to create the chamber that's going to create the pressure. So what we're going to do is take one of the cans that we've cut out, go ahead and cut it again here, and cut as close to the top here as you can to this little shoulder right here shoulder here so that you have a flat straight piece and you want to give yourself enough width to work with okay so now we have top and bottom cut out and what you want to try to do is find a straight vertical line on this thing if you look at most of them they have a seam there's a straight line right there go ahead and take your scissors and cut along that straight line that, that just assures you that you've got a good straight starting point okay so you, now you can fold this thing out flat and you're going to have a piece of aluminum to work with all right so the next step is going to be to make sure that you have the correct width for your inner wall so you want to reach from the bottom here so it's going to go down inside here to the top here now these are going to fit together but i'll tell you it doesn't matter if they fit completely together or if there's a if there's a little stagger in them and you get them put together so it's better to err on the side of this this thing being a little tall than too short if it's too short you get these jammed together it's not going to reach the top and the bottom if it's a little long that just means when you push them together they won't go all the way flush they may be a little gap and that's fine so what i su suggest you do is measure from set, set the bottom and down measure up here to the top of your rim in this case we've got an inch and three eighths 
Okay, and then you're going to want to add whatever the distance is from here to there. And you can just eyeball that. And I'm showing that's going to be about another, say, three-eighths of an inch. So if you make the width of your inner wall one and three-quarter inches, you should have eh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch extra long. So maybe cheat it just a little bit, but you're going to need a straight edge to do that. Uh, you can use anything. I'm just going to use the side of this here. And, what you, and go ahead. The, the, the best way to make sure this is square is find the piece you just cut. Put the edge of your straight edge, like your corner of it down here, so it's good and square. Let's take your marker. We'll get over as close to this as far as you can so you give yourself plenty to work with. Go ahead and cut that out. And again, don't get too crazy as far as concerned about being perfect. We're not building a Swiss watch here. We're building a homemade alcohol stove and it's going to be just fine. So the next step is going to be we're going to go for an inch and three quarter. Go ahead and sit your tape out and mark inch and three quarter here. We'll go just an extra sixteenth. Uh, as long as you make them the same, it really doesn't matter. So Okay. Okay, so now we have three components of the stove. We've got the inner wall, which is going to be rolled up like this to fit in right here. The outer the, the outer to bottom and the outer top. So the next thing to do is just go ahead and roll this up pretty small, like so. And then you want to fit it in to the can and it wants to go in, you want it to go in this groove right here. Pretty basic. And just make sure you got it rolled down tight so it fits in that groove really well. When it's in that groove, like so, can you see that? Okay. Hold it together where the overlap is, where the two pieces overlap here. Just make a small nip with the scissors in the middle on one side. Just kind of barely cut it. Just a little. And then go to the other side, squeeze it again. So you don't lose it and go back to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so that gives you a couple of index markers. So what you want to do then is on one of these, you want to cut a little more than halfway across the other end and the other side. So here to here, do the same thing. And then what, what that allows you to do is to go ahead and fold this, put those two notches together, and basically it'll stay the correct size, which means you can fit it down inside there now. It should be able to go right inside and it fit right on and you can see that it does. Okay, next thing is you're going to want to make, before you put all this together, I think it's easier to go ahead and make the holes, your burner holes, and there's a couple of tricks I learned and let me explain to you one of them. Okay, first of all, you can see that the top of this stove that I made is very smooth. When you sit a pot down on top of that, it seals it off and basically it transfers all the, the heat that the stove's building up for, back to the cup quickly so a cold cup can cause it to lose its heat. And if it cools off, it loses the pressure and doesn't make the jets out. It just stops the stove from working properly. You need something there. You can actually put a stand, if you use a stove stand with it, works fine. No problem whatsoever. You can put, I put a couple of nails across there. You can actually put a couple of small nails through there. Um, but what Mato, Mato Nupai does, and I, um, so I'm kind of robbing this idea from her, that's what the nail's for. So I'm going to turn it upside down on a piece of cardboard so it's got a little room to, uh, to move. And then put your nail right in the groove, right in the very, very, very top of that groove, right up there. You just want to poke really, really small holes kind of right through there, barely through. So we're going to just go. And if you can see... I don't know if you can see this up here, not put my hand behind, but you can see it right there. It's got a little bitty piece of aluminum that popped up. And that should be enough. We're going to do about, space it out about a third of the way around, do three of those holes. So we've got three little small, you can see those on there. Okay, yeah, you can see them pretty well. So three little, little tips coming up. And now I'm going to make the holes in the top, the burner holes. Okay, you could get really um, precise with this and measure degrees and all that around. But I tell you, in my opinion, all you gotta really do is just start on one side, make a dot, eyeball it and go across to the exact opposite and make a dot, okay? This is gonna be marking for your drilling your holes or popping your holes or whatever. 
go ahead and turn this thing around. You know, you got one at one at nine and one at three. Go ahead and make one at six and one at twelve, and then just start splitting the different split in the middle. So, put one in the middle there, one in the middle there, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just kind of eyeball it. So we got sixteen holes, um, randomly, evenly, sort of randomly, evenly spaced across there. Next step, you can do this in two different ways. Like I said. You can either knock these holes out with a pin. I used to push pin my first stove, just like a little plastic ended, you know, you put in a, in a bulletin board. Or I'm gonna use a drill this time just to keep it a little, little neater. Got a, again, I've got a um, 16th inch drill bit on there. So just find your holes and don't push too hard. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, you don't wanna dent it, but it's not really that hard to do. Just go ahead and. Okay, so we've got all the holes drilled. You can, and you can see them better from the inside. But we've got 16 holes drilled here around the uh, top here. So the final step in assembly, actually there's a couple steps. We'll go ahead and cut these ears off just a little bit here. Okay, so a couple more things. First, we want to cut, take what's going to be the inner wall. I want to cut a couple of notches in the bottom. Just kind of small triangles is all you got to do to allow the uh, fuel, alcohol fuel, to be able to, to get from the inner chamber, inner middle to the chamber, to the pressure chamber, like that. So again, we're not making a Rolex here. The last thing you need to do, and your stove will be complete, is you want to be able to get this inside of here. You want the bottom on the outside. It's just easier that way. So the easiest thing I found to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers. Put them. Uh, leave about you know a quarter an inch or whatever. You don't. You want to. You want this to be solid. So you don't want your crimp to go all. You want to crimp these. You don't want it to go all the way to the top. So bring it down about, you know, kind of in the middle, and just go about every every half inch or three quarters of an inch, and just do a little twist in it. So it should be crimped like that now. You got a little crimp to it. Okay. The final step. Let's go ahead and put your wall in, making sure that you have the notches down into the base, which is the one with with no hole in the top. Once you've got that in there, then you want to put your, go ahead and start your top in place. And just don't really worry about that inner wall for a minute. And just kind of work your way around until you've got all the little crimps you made in place. So now you've got it kind of started. Now is when you want to start paying attention to your wall. So get it down, push, squeeze it gently until your wall is almost touching the top up, up here. And then just kind of gently try to push it down as you as you gently work your top around. You don't want to bend this thing up. And once you're clear of this inner wall you made right right here, this little where you cut it out, then you got it in all the way around. Just kind of make sure feel it, and then just squeeze it the rest of the way together. And once you've got it down as far as it'll go, and just make sure it's good and solid. And there you go. It's finished. Alcohol stove. Okay, so here's the alcohol stove we just made. There are a few different things you can use for fuel. You can use denatured alcohol, which I got at my local paint supply, uh, hardware store, Walmart, any place has got it. It's clean burning fuel for marine stoves. So it's actually listed on front uh, as a fuel. This is probably the preferred fuel, actually. Uh, this is real handy. You can find this at, at any um, convenience store. I bought this at a, at a gas station, like for two bucks. Uh, two or three bucks. A gas line antifreeze and water remover heat in the yellow bottle. Uh, you can use methanol if you can find that. Gas line antifreeze like from a family dollar store. Uh, methyl hydrate, brake line antifreeze. Even even drinking alcohol like um, moonshine type alcohol. Everclear, uh, 190 proof vodka or rum. Any, any high proof alcohol. You can even use rubbing alcohol but it really doesn't burn very efficiently. It just doesn't have, it's not quite as high in alcohol content. So we're going to use denatured alcohol because it seems to be the preferred fuel. Okay, I've dimmed the lights as much as I can just so you can, you can see this. Because what usually happens, what happens with these stoves, there's a process called blooming. They bloom like a flower. So when you first light it, you'll see the flame come up inside here. And as the alcohol heats up, the pressure builds up in this outer chamber we created and it blooms and you'll see the, the, the jets take effect. So we'll go ahead and there we go. So that's the initial burn you see coming up out of the center. It's pretty neat to watch actually. You can actually hear the pressurization process starting to take place. 
There it goes, it's starting to bloom. And you can see as the pressure builds up, the burner, the outside burner gets, gets basically hotter and hotter. One more thing about alcohol stoves, they're very, very, I guess, wind sensitive. So if you want to, going to use an alcohol stove, it's probably a good idea to have a windshield that goes around it. You can make one of those out of a piece of aluminum foil. Just fold it up a couple of times where it'll stand up and put it around. Super light, super convenient. And, you know, just tweak this thing. If you can drill, if you, if you build one and done work for your, you know, to your satisfaction, try something different. Drill some bigger holes, make a new one, you know, do some different things. It's, it's just a little bit of time and it's kind of fun playing with. All in all, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with the performance. Um, just the fact that I can, you can make a stove out of a, two Coke cans and use just a little bit of fuel that you can find anywhere. And there's a wide variety of fuels available and you can cook your food. That's pretty cool. Once again, just get, get, get a couple of cans and try it out. This is my kind of take on it. Again, there are lots and lots and lots of alcohol stove videos out there on YouTube showing all kinds of really, some of them are extremely high tech complicated designs. This one seemed to be the most, I guess, performance for bang for your buck kind of deal. All right. Well, as always, I appreciate you watching my, my videos. Thanks for subscribing to Survival on Purpose channel. Uh, click the old thumbs up down below if you like this and let everybody else know you like it. If you think your friends will like it, tell them. Also, I have just started a Amazon store, so I'll put a link below to that. Anything you buy off there will benefit this channel. It's not going to cost you any more money. I just get a, a tiny little, little um, sales referral fee or whatever they want to call it today at Amazon and kind of help keep the... Uh, keep the old video camera going. So thanks again. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. See you next time.